um, we are now having another section. So we are going to have uh, uh, Yizhen Nai. Uh, he is the lead digital solution architect from AIA Hong Kong and Macau. He will be talking more about the building a AI and um, ML, the machine learning model API for digital app. So uh, Yizhen, so nice to meet you. Hi, hi, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Loud and clear. Hi, okay. So, nice. I, yeah, I can also see your uh, your slide as well. So it's yes. fine. So I pass the time it's to fine. you. So okay. thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Okay. Hi everyone. Okay, like to let's thank you for joining this session. Okay. Today's session I will share about the building AI ML artificial intelligence and machine learning models API for our digital applications. Uh in AI, definitely we build a lot, we use a lot of artificial intelligence and machine learnings models. Today, so I try to share how we build and what kind of things, uh, the tips I can share with you guys, okay? Definitely, I am very active member in the data science and machine learning communities, okay? You can check it out my mediums or GitHub over here, okay? In case you would like to get some code repository, right? So, before I try to share more about how we build it, okay? Let me share about the AI and ML maturity before we go into why we build the AI and machine learning model API, right? Why we need to build it, okay? Because uh, nowadays, everything is, okay, for the, for the predictions, okay, for the scoring, okay, we always talk about the, the machine learning, artificial intelligence, okay? So that's why we need to build some endpoint to serve for our customers or internal users. Uh, back to the old stage, okay, you may see uh, with the with the raw data, okay, with the clean data, we have the standard report, we have ad hoc report and the old lab as well, okay. We can just predict something, uh, what will have, what is happening, okay, what is happening, okay. We are not required to serve it as an API, okay. Just traditional report can be fulfilled all the business requirement or even the customer requirements, but. In terms of AI and AI and machine learning maturity going up, okay, we will surfing some of the dynamic dynamical models to serve our customer applications or surfing for internal application as well. So we will do some generic predictive analysis for what why is happening, okay, and some of the predictive modeling, okay, then what and try to figure out what is happening as well. And the, at the final stage, okay, the maturity is we will also tell what is the best things could be happens, okay. Definitely, we are not using the static report, okay, to try to tell the business or end customers what is the best could be happen, okay. Then you try to predict something. Let's say we take a stock price, predict my revenue and investment, okay. This is not possible just in a report. Okay? We want to have a real-time API to serve for it. So, Nowadays, okay, definitely we build a lot of AI, ML API to serve for our end customers, serve for our business planners, uh, applications, we are the API as well. Depends on maturity. Now we are in the stage in the very high uh, AI and machine learning maturities to serve our AI machine learning models. We are the APIs and, and the very dynamically real-time reports. So uh, can we see the AI and machine learning API? Actually, it's everywhere okay we can see the ai machine learning api models in every use cases just like a mobile applications uh just like a website okay just something like a computer vision model we can see the artificial intelligence okay in everywhere something like in machine learning models we have some uh different pre for example computer visions okay we can use the computer vision to try to do some image recognitions uh some of the machine visions Something like very simple to understand is the OCR to object recognitions to automatically process the claim from something in insurance sectors. This is a computer vision space. We need to say serve our model okay, via the APIs. And definitely we have some of the NLP model, okay? Something like we build a chat bot, okay? Uh, we have the NLP or NLU, natural language understanding, natural language processing to try to understand what the humans try to type in and then give the response to the customers or our business planner, okay? This is also via the API as well. We also try to build in some of the translation API. We understand in Hong Kong, not all the people try to talk in English, okay? We maybe some cases, combination with the Cantonese and the English, or sometimes in Mandarin as well, okay? We need to do some translations. We build a lot of API to do some translation as well. So we're also doing some API for the data extractions, okay? To extract the data from the voice, from the video. So try to extract all the data 
from the unstructural format, okay, to the structural format to try to gain the insight via the NLP modules. And last but not least, we also build some speech model to try to do something very simple to try to speech to task, okay, or task to speech. We also via the API. So a bunch of use cases. We can see the AI and machine learning models, okay, in everywhere, okay, in every use cases. I'm trying to summarize common usage pattern of the AI ML API in three different pillars, okay? Uh, the first pillar is talking about the improved existing system and processes, okay? The second pillar is talking about accelerating business, as I said, try to forecast something, right? So the third pillar is talking about deliver results quickly, okay? Let me go through with you guys one by one. The first one, improve existing system and process. Business post optimizations, reporting, predictive maintenance. Just imagine, we can build some API to try to do some report, okay? Let's say the report to try to predict something, okay? Uh, what is the next value, okay? Or is it is a fault? Is it a fault claim cases? We can do some fault reporting cases uh, API to try to detect, okay? This kind of behaviors is it some of the fault or not okay we can also input the behaviors okay inside apis and try to predict okay is this something going wrong okay is it also in the pillar of the predictive maintenance so we have a lot of use case in the pieces of business process automations optimization sorry yeah we can also accelerate the business to do things some sales forecasting revenues forecasting okay via the api we also can do something supply pricing forecasting as well okay very easy to understand okay pulling the api just input the arguments okay we can forecast the next best value to recommend our customers or our agents aka our business planner as well yeah we can also doing something real-time analysis to do some recommendations recommendations means okay something like our products we have a lot of insurance products okay what kind of next best product would be if you find this i uh, have this kind of productions what is the next product would need to have okay what's the recommendation from your system okay definitely we need to train our sophisticated machine learning model okay to try to recommend a missing product for our end customers or tell our agents our tech business planner okay what kind of product you should tell the customer you should buy it and definitely we can also doing some fault detection just in cases uh, the claim, okay. Uh, I don't know why this people will okay, try to click claim something, okay. We can see the pattern, okay. And then we rather we learn the pattern, we can train our model to do some fault detections to try to see the behaviors input, okay, to our API. We can detect, okay, is it a fault claim or not? Definitely, claim is just one of the cases or fault behavior we can be detected. So, uh, let me try to share a little bit more details about our back end okay how we build end-to-end -end of uh end-to-end -end flow okay of the building ai machine learning api definitely before we having a api you can use it you can consume it right from the left to the right in here okay we need to prepare a data okay you can see i try to use free icon in here to try to visualize definitely we have the traditional relational database no matter sql no matter progress mysql whatever is related to the database we need to prepare the data. In some cases, uh, you're not lucky, right? Because in data science role, I can say 18% of the time we try to clean the, and prepare the data before we having a sophisticated model in here. So, second icon is a file basis, okay? Something like a semi-structural data, something like a JSON. You need to fraternize or normalize the JSON data before you are trying to train the model. Um, in some cases, as I said, okay, some is a speech model, okay, some of the NLP, you just speech to text, okay, before we try to doing some NLP, natural language processing to analyze your, what you're saying, you need to transcribe it, right, you also need to prepare the data, so before you try to get the actual text, we need to build an API to do the speech to text, okay, that's one of the cases we are used a lot in the preparing data. Here's the first phase, okay? Before we have an API, right? It's very sophisticated. And then experience, okay? Uh, data science, okay? Is uh, experiment pauses, uh, iterations, okay? Number of time. It's try to train to see the accuracy, see the laws, okay? And then try to act, try to examine the model. Is this able to deliver or not, okay? Uh, we build the model, okay? Definitely, we have a lot of their tools to try to build 
the uh, AI machine learning API. In data science or machine learning world, we widely use, I think you heard about before, right? Uh, with the Jupyter Notebook, if you don't like it, definitely, uh, you can also use the Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio to try to, as IDE, okay, to try to develop the code as well, okay? Definitely, we heavily use um, Python mainly, okay? We also, you can also use the R, okay? Or even if you use getting the Spark platform, okay, you can you also use the Scalar. It's a driver-based go okay, to try to train your model as well. And then after your development and build the model, uh, set up the right algorithm, okay, pack the model, you need time to train in here, so, okay? Train models, okay? Obviously, if you're a data scientist, okay, you may have one of the computer machines to try to train the model, but for us, okay, it's not enough, okay? Definitely, our model is super large. Definitely, it depends on number of and volumes of the data, okay? Uh, we need cloud-based computing to try to train our model. We are trying to, if we train our NLP model, normally we train a few weeks in some cases, okay? Just normal laptop, even with the GPU, if you have big money, you try to big you, uh, great GPU power, the uh, laptop or PC is not enough. We need to have a cluster and try to train up and test the model, develop the model accuracy as well. Normally, now we use the cloud to train the machine learning and artificial learning model. So we need to wait, okay, after building, yeah. After that, okay, after a model has been trained, it's just a model, okay, just a model, okay, before uh, before you try to serve it, okay. Actually, you cannot directly uh, use the model to serve as API, okay. Definitely, I will try to share what kind of things, okay, we can more easily to serve the machine learning model uh, as an API. We have a lot of the tools, okay. Before, we're going to serve it as API. We need to register and manage the model, right? Uh, as I said, it's the experience, it's the iterations. You may train 100 of time, okay, 200 of times, okay, a weeks, for example. Depends on the data, change as well. You need to keep the changes, okay, keep changes. So that you need to have the model repository, okay, to register, okay, and save your model. Something like here, to register and manage the model. And then, okay, you can build a model API, okay, after the register, okay, definitely. You can use Python, drivers, okay? Uh, your even Node.js, okay? You can also build an API and then read the, read the model and then serve an API. And definitely for the deployment and monitoring the model everywhere, okay? Uh, in our cases, okay, we are packaged the model as a containers to serve for our customers or serve for our agency applications as well, okay? Uh, business finance application as well. So this is the cases, okay? From the left to the right, we need to prepare, okay? We need to experience before we have the API to deploy, okay? This is, seems like a very easy process. It takes time to do it. So let's talk about more details, okay? To track, okay? How do we deliver, okay? The delivery flows of the AI ML API, okay? At the top and the bottom as well, okay? So let's talk about the bottom. So before we have uh, the API to serve our applications, our digital applications, is the data scientists or data analysts, right? As I said, okay, we need to explore the data. We need to know the data before we train the model, okay? Normally, no matter the data scientists or data analysts, okay, they will use the Jupyter Notebook, okay, to explore the data. Or in some cases, uh, it's just heavy or massive amount of data. They use the scalar-based engine, just like something like we are using a Databricks, for example, okay, to try to look into the data, okay, massive scale, okay, try to explore the data before we train the model. And then definitely, we can also use the same engine to train the model. This is the first step. The data scientists, the data analysts, okay, use the notebook, connect to various source of data, SQL, or even the, uh, to storage, okay, and then obtain the JSON file to normalize the data, fraternize the data, and then train the models. This is the first step, okay? Uh, second step, okay, you may use the ML4, okay? ML4 is great uh, open source library, okay? Definitely, it, has, it also has a very tight integration with Databricks as well, which is tightly coupled in here, okay? You can use it as a model repository to register your trained model artifact, okay, into the ML4. Definitely with the versioning. As I said, it's iterations, okay? We need to train your models number of times, okay, depends on model quality, depends on algorithms, depends on the volume of the data, you need to train multiple of times, okay? And then you can use an ML flow and then save it as a model registry in here. And definitely, ML flow, okay, give you a one more convenience, okay? Uh, it also can be automatically packaged 
and serve it as API as well. Okay, but in here we haven't used it. Okay, in the IA we haven't used it, but it has a half of the box of capabilities to help you very easily to package your platform based code or our 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 code based based model to try to package as a container models. Other than that, okay, other registrations as usual, okay, definitely this is the code, right? We need to check into the Git repository, no matter the GitHub, uh, no matter the uh, Bitbucket, you can check in into the Git repository as well. This is the track of the data scientist as usual, okay? Very seamless, very easy to understand, okay, from the data scientist as well, okay? But how do we cooperate with the API developer, right? Hey, uh, maybe just see things side by side, API developers, they use their favorite IDE, okay, maybe. Uh, Eclipse, maybe the Visual Studio code, okay, to try to develop a model, develop the API code, okay, to try to read, okay, the machine learning model being created, okay. After development, okay, they do the same thing, okay, check in to the Git repository tree, Bitbucket, uh, GitHub, wherever, it's, okay, they want, okay, to the Git repositories. After that, okay, we need to do saying some continuous integration and continuous delivery tools. Something like, I think there's a quite famous uh, Jenkins. We can do the continuous integration and delivery, okay? The first step, okay? Uh, the Jenkins, okay? The CI CD tools will be get the Git repositories, okay? To get the code, okay? From the API developer, okay? Because I need that code, okay? To build my API applications. In the code, okay? Definitely, it doesn't contain any API model. Okay, where's the model it is, right? Okay, we need to package it. As a container to serve for serve as an API, right? So the Jenkins, okay, would we'll talk with the ML flow to grab the latest trained ML model into the same container images and then package as API contain, uh, containerized APIs mode containers. And then, okay, they can ship it, okay? Definitely the first step before we serve in the Kubernetes engines, okay? After the packaging, Definitely, the API developer is also need to define the Docker files, okay? Based on Docker file definitions, package all the stuff, and then push it in the container registries before we ask the Kubernetes to serve for it. As a final step, the Jenkins, okay, will order the Kubernetes to do a deployment and then grab the pack, the build it container model, and then serve as an API. This is a journey. This is a journey. You can see, you can evaluate, okay? It's not, not just one step, okay? And then we can get the API magically. It's quite complicated. It's a team of effort, okay? From the API developer, they are the developer great, okay? But may not have the data scientist knowledge, okay? The data scientist days, okay? They have a deep dive, understand the data science, statistics, okay? Build focus, just focusing on the model deliveries and algorithm developments as well. So in here, is it, you may ask me, okay? Is it every time you try to build all the APIs, okay? By from Strero, okay, from Strash, okay. Is it you are trying to build your API for the special test API from Strash, okay? Uh, I can say no, okay. In most cases, XT20 rules, okay. We will try to leverage the Cloud P ready API uh, to leverage that because something like the computations, like the special tax, okay. For example, uh, maybe AWS, Google, or even Microsoft also build a lot of great computations, uh, great. Uh, NLP models, okay, is we can just use it, okay, you just use it. Not all the time we can build it, okay, but in some cases we want to use our own data to train the model. We need to build it, we will go through this flow. Also, do it here as an API. So, in some cases, we are not just surfing the API in previous way, okay, you can see, see it from the slide there, okay, it is a model API to try to predict something. After that, you get the API in here, so, okay. You can try to pass the argument to try to next best value okay, recommendations. If I buy one A, B, C, D, okay, what is the recommendations? I will recommend to buy C, for example. Okay, this is an example of the recommendation API. Okay, so um, not just that. Okay, we have we can also do another pattern of all the AI ML digital apps, enable digital apps. Also, from the left to the right, okay, before we model to serve, right? In here, so, okay, as I said in previous slide, okay, we have a lot of data to make the model API ready. That's the training times, okay? Uh, in terms of API development, it's relatively super easy in here, right? So, uh, we have the logs, okay, maybe in the structured and semi-structured, as I said, okay, maybe in videos, 
uh, maybe uh, files, maybe from your LB application is structural data, or even nowadays, okay, even your digital apps, okay, or even a sensor, okay, is can be contribute some of the log data, some of the event data we can ingest and then try to predict something. Uh, in here, okay, normally we will use two paths, okay, to try to digest the, to give the real time decisions to our applications. Definitely serve for our business planner or agents, uh, business planner or end customers. In here, uh, from the injections, very famous, okay, for the Kafka, okay, if the left hand side uh, is a sensor, is a mobile app, normally we use the Kafka or you can use the conference Kafka in some cases, okay, to receive the event from the mobile apps. Okay, this is one of the cases for the real time. And okay, some of the cases is not real time enough. Okay, I can say it's near real time, it's not real, real, real time. Okay, it's just a log. Maybe it's continuous saving in some way. I need to ingest that log, okay, to do the real time analytics, something, right? We are using the Apache Spark based engines, something like Databricks. Okay, we can ingest the logs very lively and massively and then pause the data in near real time. After that, okay. No matter is the real time or some or new real times, okay, we are saving in the Hadoop HDFS storage, okay, in cloud, okay, maybe in S3 in AWS, okay, maybe in the block storage in Azure as well. Just save, just save it. A single source of truth here before we doing some analytics, okay. We need to save it, okay. Make sure data is being saved. It. No matter the real time path or the semi real time path, okay, or new real time path. Your first step, and then that's the metric, okay. Pap analytics and train the data. Definitely, uh, we can do some real time analytics. Okay, in here, we can be, be train some of the recommendation model, cleaning model, fault detection model a lot. Okay, in here, and then using the Spark streaming. Uh, now they they call it just real time structural streaming in Apache Spark. Okay, and then loaded model lively connect to the Kafka, connect to the storage. Okay, and then do the real time analytics or real-time scoring and then give the result to the mobile applications. In these cases, I'm not trying to serve the result, the scoring result via the API directly, okay? I just call the data, okay? Let's say a recommendations. The recommended result can be just pass the argument to API, you got it. In other words, okay, uh, can we try to save it, serve it in a non-SQL database, okay, like Mongo, okay, or even the even the relational database, it's also possible, not via the API, okay? We can do some real-time analytics and data scoring in here via the Apache Spark as well. After the analytics, we do we save the scoring result back to the Mongo database, or either, definitely if you don't like the non-SQL database, you can also save the relational, for example, progress in here as well. So, scoring results, saving in Mongo's, and definitely your real time digital applications can be read the Mongo via the Mongo list structure, for example, and then get the scoring result. That's get the real time experience. At the bottom, okay, maybe it is a new real time. You can surface as a build BI, okay, uh, business intelligence, or even report in here. So that is it. That is the how we build a real time AI ML digital apps. So I leave some time for the questions in here, okay, Patrick. Okay, thanks, Ethan. So, um, I I think we are running out of time. So, yes, uh, I, I think yeah, it's yeah. okay, it's okay. But uh, I I I would just pay, pay, I want to uh, get your attention. Actually, there's one um question yes. from the audience. Actually, from yes, from yes. the yeah. So I, yeah. I think you can follow follow up him uh, offline. So he is asking about what type of API deploy in Kubernetes and an and example. So uh, maybe we don't have time to uh, share oh, here. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, I yeah, think we I think will get the deck, right? You can get the deck and yeah. then you can see my Twitter. I love, okay, just treat me, okay? Or you go to my GitHub, you can also reach out to me. Yeah? I share a lot of the AI ML for the example. <laughs> just check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so uh, for the audience uh, asking this question, feel free to reach out to Ethan offline. So, uh, yep. yeah, thanks, really, thanks, Ethan, for your support here. So, um, okay, so uh, we are going to another sections. So, uh, okay, see you, Ethan. See you again. See you.